Hello, my name is Dr. Lily Wong, and I am a professor in the Durham School of Architectural Engineering and Construction, specifically in the Architectural Engineering Program. And I'm very happy to introduce you to the Architectural Engineering Program here at the University of Nebraska. Um, it is one of three programs within the Durham School, and um, only located in Omaha, and we'll talk more about um, the great things about it during this presentation. So first I want to talk to you about what is architectural engineering because there is a lot of confusion between architecture and architectural engineering. Our program AE, I'm going to shorten it as AE today, focuses on the engineering design, operation, and maintenance of buildings. So this graphic on the slide shows that an architect or somebody who's working in architecture, they're really focused on what the building looks like. How does it feel? How do the spaces go together? What materials get used? Um, how does it interact with the outdoor experience? But students in our program are studying architectural engineering, which focuses on how the building works. Is it stable, safe, sustainable, serviceable? Do the occupants feel comfortable? Are they healthy? Um, is it an efficient building? There is a bit of um, the mood. How do you use the lighting to affect the visibility of um, in offices or classrooms, for example. How does the power get to every single room? How much does it cost and how much will it be to implement it? So those aspects are more uh, under the auspices of architectural engineering rather than um, the architect. We do work closely with architects, but we end up focusing more on the engineering and integration of the building systems so those include the structural systems, how the building's standing up, but also, as I mentioned, the lighting systems, how do you actually see inside the building, um, the electrical systems, how do we get power to every room, the mechanical systems have to do with the heating, the ventilation, the air conditioning, so that we're very comfortable inside the building, even when it's zero degrees or 100 degrees outside, and also the acoustical systems of the buildings. How does the building sound so that people can actually hear the lecture or maybe they have a private office? Acoustics is my particular specialty, so um, that's the one that I'm most comfortable with. But certainly our students learn about all of these technical areas when they study architectural engineering. On the next slide, you'll see that um, why couldn't you just study civil engineering to do the structures part of buildings? Well, you could. You could also study mechanical engineering to do the heating, ventilation, air conditioning design of buildings. Or you could do electrical engineering and study how the um, building electrical systems work. But what's different about architectural engineering versus these other um, units, civil, electrical, or mechanical, is that we focus specifically on buildings. So the depth that you get, you get the same depth if you were to study structures in civil engineering or structures in architectural engineering. But what's different is the breadth, the other things that you end up studying. In civil engineering, you'll also study about water um, resources and transportation and environmental systems. Those don't have to do with buildings. Same, similarly, in mechanical engineering, if you were to study HVAC of buildings there for your depth top area, but your breadth area would be more like robotics or nanotechnology or manufacturing. Um, and you have a similar example on this slide from electrical engineering. So the difference is when you study architectural engineering, the focus is specifically on buildings. So you learn about your technical depth area for buildings, and then the breadth that you're learning about everything has to do with buildings. You become sort of a consummate renaissance engineer because you actually are somewhat a civil engineer learning about the structures somewhat a mechanical engineer learning about the HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and a little bit of an electrical engineer learning about building electrical systems. So the breadth, all the courses within our specific curriculum talk about building systems so that when it comes to designing a building, you can sit at a table, completely understand your specialty area, mine being acoustics, but at the same time work very well with other people at the table who are dealing with building structures because you know their language and dealing with building mechanical systems, building electrical systems, and so on. So the thing to consider um, in thinking about whether architectural engineering is a good fit for you is, do you want to work with buildings? If you know and are excited about working with buildings and building design, then you should join an architectural engineering program. 
So the building industry is a very large industry. It's $600 billion annually with over 7 million employees, and there are around 10,000 architectural engineering firms in the country, including firms in almost every major city in the United States. And there's other interesting information about the building industry. The U.S. Green Building Council reports that in the United States, buildings account for 36% of the total energy usage, 65% of the electricity consumption in the states is through buildings. And you can see the other per, um, percentages there, greenhouse gas emissions, raw material usage, waste output, potable water consumption. I mean, there's a lot of resources that are being expended in buildings that we live and work in every day. So architectural engineering has a big impact. It's a very big industry and it clearly uses a lot of energy. And so if you're interested in sustainability as well, this is a very good field to get into to try to reduce that energy consumption in buildings. At the University of Nebraska, architectural engineering is one of the newest programs. Uh, we first offered this degree in 1999, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this, um, we are only offered on the Omaha campus in the Peter Kiewit Institute. Um, our degree is a four plus one degree. What that means is it's four years, uh, you, in four years you study for a Bachelor's of Science degree in architectural engineering. For many of the other degree programs, that's the accredited degree, but that's not so on architectural engineering. We follow a model where after the four-year bachelor's, you are asked to stay for an additional one year to get a master's of architectural engineering. And these two degrees together, the four plus the one, comprise the accredited engineering degree. So if you want to become a professional engineer, which is very common in our field of architectural engineering, you must stay for the fifth year degree. We find that this is necessary because, as I pointed out a few slides ago, architectural engineers really are composite engineers where we're teaching you everything about structures, everything fundamental about mechanical engineering and fundamental about electrical engineering. So um, in order to get all the uh, information and training together for um, for you to be a professional architectural engineer, the best programs, and we want to be one of the best programs, really do involve a five-year um, sequence. Now, why is our program at UNL special? There is a high demand for architectural engineering graduates across the country. There are currently only around 20 accredited architectural engineering programs in the US, and we are one of the 20. And that's very different from when you think about civil engineering or mechanical or electrical, almost every college of engineering in the world has a civil, mechanical, and or electrical engineering department. But only 20 of them in the United States have accredited architectural engineering programs. So we are one of the few programs that offers all technical disciplines. That is, our architectural engineers do learn about structures lighting, electrical, mechanical, and acoustical systems. Not all of the 20 um, programs can um, tout that they do that. Uh, we have about 18 affiliated faculty within the Durham School to help cover all of those technical areas. Another unique thing about our Nebraska Architectural Engineering Program is we are one of the few AE programs that offers multiple levels of AE degrees. So we offer, as you heard, the Bachelor's and the Master's of Architectural Engineering, which comprise the accredited degree. But we also offer um, the chance to study for a Master's of Science, and I think we're one of only two or three that offer an opportunity to study for a PhD in Architectural Engineering. As I started this slide out saying, there is a high demand for architectural engineers across the states and really all over the world. And the reason is that people in the building industry know that when they get an AE graduate, that person has the technical depth to be able to design their particular building system, but the breadth that they have studied allows them to be able to have a better understanding of the other building systems and to be able to work better then on the team and integrate those building systems together. Another reason why our uh, Nebraska Architectural Engineering Program is special is that we are housed in Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha is home to three of the largest architectural engineering companies in the United States. And the benefit to us is immense because we have a very strong local industry base. We have therefore unprecedented access to 
um, their knowledge and also their um, their ability to get into buildings. So we have them, many of them take us on building tours. Our students have a wonderful opportunity to get um, internship opportunities. It's very easy to invite these industry um, folks to join us for guest lectures. So it really uh, sets our program apart from any other architectural engineering program in the country. Now, I'm going to spend a little time talking about what the architectural engineering curriculum is like at Nebraska. For the first two years of the bachelor's degree, it's the coursework is quite similar to any of the other engineering degrees. There's um, the only differences are there are some more basic coursework on computer aided design and some introduction to architecture studio because as I mentioned before, we work very closely with architects. They are very um, strong part of the team in getting a building built and so it's good for our students and our graduates to understand that design process and how important it is. So in those first two years you know, you're taking statics, dynamics, electrical, engineering um, fundamentals, thermodynamics, really all the fundamentals to lay a good um, groundwork for the practical um, design that's coming up in the further years. So in year three, I think that's one of the most fun years in my particular opinion, because that's the year that you're exposed to the breadth of architectural engineering. You get introductory classes to all of the technical areas, you learn about structures, you learn about lighting, electrical systems, mechanical systems. I teach a class that year to um, third year students on acoustic systems. So you get a flavor of everything so that you understand and get the language and under, um, to be able to work with everybody else on the design of a building. But you can't be an expert at all those areas, or you could, but it might take too long. So in our program, you're asked to select one of three options. That will be your focus option in the fourth and fifth year. So that fourth year, you select one of three. They are, you either select that you're going to go into structures in depth, or you're going to go into the area of lighting and electrical systems, or the third area is mechanical and acoustics. In the fifth year, you end up taking even more in-depth classes within that um, your particular chosen area. But there are also two notable experiences that happen in that fifth year. The fifth year, remember, is that Master's of Architectural Engineering. In the fifth year, you are asked to complete a graduate project. And this is an independent study on some topic within your particular discipline. So over the years, I've advised students who have worked on graduate projects studying classroom acoustics or looking specifically at how heating, ventilation, and air conditioning noise can impact um, student achievement. So you pick a project with help from um, faculty mentors or industry mentors and really work in depth to study it um, over the course of that year. The other one is that if you go into the building design industry, you will have to work on a team. And so we do have a special course that our interdisciplinary team design project where we put our students on groups of four to six people and we run them through a realistic but very time shortened process where they start by working on a little bit of the architectural design, then going further into schematic design. They pick a system, build that out to be design development, and then finally create some construction documents. So that is a very realistic process, and our students get to run through all of that. But what's even more particularly interesting is that they are mentored on this process not only by faculty within our um, Durham, Durham School, but also by a group of industry mentors. And this is where that um, benefit of being in Omaha really comes to play because we have a large enough local industry base that there are a number of industry um, mentors that are willing to come and spend time with our students to help them actually go through a realistic design of this building. So every student team is mentored by their own team of industry mentors. And typically over the past five years, we have over 25 industry mentors working with our students every year on this class. And we often hear from our graduates that this is one of the most demanding classes in our curriculum, but also one of the most memorable and um, uh, helpful courses that they take. So both of those, the graduate project and interdisciplinary team design project, happen in that fifth year. In addition to all the coursework training, we're also um, 
very lucky to have a number of student organizations uh, housed within our, um, our program. Because it's such a multidisciplinary um, discipline, we have a large number of student organizations. And it's great because our students therefore have a lot of opportunities to practice their leadership skills in running these, uh, these student organizations. So here you see a list of a number of the organizations that are sponsored in our, in our program. The first of all is the Architectural Engineering Institute, which is the most broad and overlooks or oversees all of these different areas. But then more specifically, those students in our program who are focused in structures do um, join the American Society of Civil Engineers, which a lot of the civil engineering students also join. There's another one called the Structural Engineering Association of Nebraska, which is also very active in our um, student body. Another one that deals with the structures area is Earthquake Engineering Research Institute. On the lighting electrical side, there's an Illumination Engineering Society North America student branch. And in the mechanical and acoustics area, we do have an ASHRAE student branch as well as an Acoustical Society of America student branch. And these organizations do all kinds of activities. Like I said, they do building tours, they bring in guest lectures, not only from local firms, but even nationally or internationally. And they will often also participate in student design competitions. So our students have repeatedly won or placed in many of these national or international student design competitions. And you see a listing here, the AEI student design competition, the earthquake one again, the Howard Branston lighting one, the ASHRAE, the ASA student design competition. We have had students in the past 14 years that have won or placed in each of these competitions, and some of them repeatedly, where every year we are um, placing or winning. So we're very proud of having a very strong student group um, but also being nationally known uh, on this uh, in these areas, getting the, the word out that we're here. Our students also have an opportunity to um, study abroad. One in particular is specifically geared for architectural engineering, which is a summer study in Italy, often listed under ENGR 490. This summer opportunity lasts three weeks, typically in late May and early June, and it's led by one of our architectural engineering faculty members, where the student group um, goes all together to Italy to study the architecture and engineering firsthand at these assorted historical sites like in Rome, Florence, Milan, and Pisa. So that one is very popular and regularly offered. We also have other opportunities. We have um, memorandums of understanding with universities in Germany as well as in Australia where uh, we are sending students back and forth between their um, building science or architectural engineering programs and ours. And then other students have also gone on and studied in other places such as Brazil, Norway, um, other uh, European countries, not so much Asian countries yet, but we are trying to establish those opportunities as well in the college. In terms of career opportunities, we have a high placement for our architectural engineering graduates. Almost all of our students do have jobs at graduation. Typically, those are often with architectural engineering design firms, or sometimes they go into building product manufacturers, um, or other systems that uh, other groups of people that work with building systems but not necessarily in design. So the salaries will usually range from about $50,000 starting salary, sometimes up to $70,000 starting in the larger cities uh, on the coast. And this is higher than you would see from a four-year degree typically because we are, like I said, graduating typically fifth-year students, four plus one for the BS and MA. And our current graduates are found all over the country um, in cities across many, many states. So think about whether architectural engineering could be for you. These are some questions that might help you to decide whether this is a good field for you to study. Do you like buildings? That is certainly a primary issue because that's what we deal with. I personally love buildings. And um, as I see down there, I gain a lot of personal satisfaction from being a part of a team and seeing a building that I can point to and say that I worked on the acoustic design of that building. So also on that bullet list, do you like working on teams? Because buildings are designed by teams. Do you like working on a variety of projects? Because typically you're working on a number of buildings at the same time, not necessarily just on one. 
Do you like to know how things work? Think about new or better ways to do things. And then particularly, are you interested in sustainability or engineering a greener future? Because engineering buildings is a great way to help deal with um, how we use resources in the coming years. So I hope that um, you found this um, session helpful. And if you do want more information, we encourage you to look on our website. Feel free to contact me directly. My email is there. And also I put down Dr. A.J. Ardomush's con contact information because she is our current Architectural Engineering Program Coordinator. Thank you very much.